The Jews have completed their first year of wandering in the Midbar, in the wilderness, and it's time to celebrate the Passover holiday, Pesach, for the first time since they left Egypt. God commands them to again bring the carbon Pesach, the Paschal Lamb, the Passover sacrifice. But a group of men are not able to bring it because they're tame. For want of a better definition, they're impure as a result of having come into contact with a dead body. They beg Moses, Moshe, for another chance. Can't we bring the carbon Pesach? Moshe says to them, wait right here, let me find out. And amazingly, as he does a number of times in the Torah, he's got God on demand. He requests an audience, asks God, and God says to him, yes, give them a second chance. In 30 days, let them bring the carbon Pesach. Pesach Sheni, the second carbon Pesach for those who weren't able to bring it the first time around. Let them bring the lamb as a sacrifice, eat it along with matzah and mara or the bitter herbs. So the first question is, why in 30 days? Why didn't God just say to Moshe, sure, let them purify themselves and as soon as they're purified, they can bring the sacrifice, they get a second chance. The answer to that, explain the commentators, is that in certain years, we add an additional month to the Jewish calendar in leap years. When we do that, Passover, Pesach, gets pushed off a month, which means 30 days from Passover is a day that always has the latent potential to be the actual Passover holiday. That's why that date was chosen. But there's a bigger question. Why is this the only redo in the entire Torah? If you don't have the chance to shake the lulav on sukkahs or blow or hear the shofar on Rosh Hashanah, you don't have a Rosh Hashanah sheni or a sukkah sheni, you don't get a second chance. There's only a Pesach sheni. The answer to that, explains one of the commentators, is that the Passover sacrifice is critical to our amuna, to our belief system. That's when we became a nation. We took a risk. We took and sacrificed animals that were worshipped by the Egyptians showing our loyalty to God. And we have to remember every day that God took us out of Egypt so that we no longer be slaves to a foreign nation and instead we could be free, free to serve Him. And maybe that's why the Passover Seder, which is meant to remember and reenact the Passover sacrifice, is the ritual that's most commonly observed by Jews today, observant and non-observant, because it's so important to our belief system. And maybe there's one more lesson. Mitzrayim, the Hebrew word for Egypt, means to constrict. Maybe we're meant to remind ourselves and think about how to break through the things that constrict us, that prevent us from reaching our spiritual potential. If we're honest with ourselves, we know what those things are. It could be our boss, our job, our significant other, could be our kids, could be our friends, could be our community, could be our hobbies, could be our addictions, could be our phone or other devices. It could be the fact that we're setting our goals too low. We're setting our goal at be a good couch potato instead of be a passionate servant of God and the ambassador of his goodwill. During the coronavirus, hopefully we've all taken on certain resolutions to do certain things that we should be doing, to stop doing certain things that we shouldn't be doing. But if all we've done is take on resolutions, then when we come out of this, hopefully soon, we'll be the same people who've just taken on some resolutions. We need to do more. As good as those resolutions are, and good luck with them, we need to work on ourselves. And that takes time. We've had time, and we will have more time to try to work on being better, better servants, more passionate servants of God. Good luck on that journey. Mm -hmm.